Hey, good morning all. We are here on uh, Thursday, February 3rd, 2022. Welcome you to Motions uh, from the Allen Park Presbyterian Church. You're here with me, Pastor Tim Marvel. Let's uh, try to be here every Monday through Thursday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Coming to you from a very cold, cold and snowy southeastern Michigan today. Coming to you from my home office. I have um, I have this, and then I have five hours of Presbytery committee meeting meetings that I have to do today. So I am staying here, and um, I am also uh, trying to be careful about exposures. COVID uh, and, and um, trying to rest up uh, so because I, I have surgery on Monday scheduled continuation of my treatment my bladder cancer so I am feeling a little bit better I was um, starting to be very concerned there on uh, Tuesday about the way that I was feeling and uh, did get and uh, did get uh, some uh, medication Antibiotics, I think, are feeling may probably helped a little bit. Also, just resting, just resting, and and um, staying hydrated, I think, helps quite a bit. Nancy Horvath, good morning to you, and Kip Horvath, good morning. Hope everything went well for Kimmy. Hi, Ken Woods. That major storm. Well, you know, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the foot and a half. But um, we're not done yet, either. Uh, my understanding is we can get another one to three inches today. And, uh, and, and we have to also remember, a good three or four inches of that um, did come down. But it, uh, it melted on the ground, or went to slush. So, uh, but it certainly wasn't as bad as everybody says. Although, um, the roads aren't good, I'll tell you that much right now. I hope your roads are better. So, uh, and Amy Bowerman, in addition to Ken Woods, and Judy Hatch, Janet Lyons, good morning. You guys got a lot of the snow out there, I know that. You, you had, I think it was colder, and I think that uh, it started sticking earlier. Hi, Linda Clark, I hope you're feeling better. Barry and Margo, good morning to you, and Sandy Sauerbeck, Scott Johnson, hello. Joan Riggs, good morning. Kevin and Chris Vaughn, lots of folks here today. Amy Bowerman, I think that they are helping all together. Hi, Norma Bentley. Uh, it also helped that my wife said, um, you're teaching me how to use the snowblower. And she did. And she actually was out um, shoveling, too. It's unbelievable. Um, not unbelievable. It was just, I very much, very much appreciate what she did. Hi, Joy Yember and uh, Judy Martin. Barbara Shute, good morning. Bob Ando, good morning. Oh, no. So she didn't get it then, huh? I'm looking at uh, Nancy Horvath's note. Yep, everybody's coming in here. And, uh, so we've got Jean Darwin. Joan, Joan, where is it? Joanne Butters, Helen England, Aunt Mary, hello, Barbara Wolf, hello, Don Jones, hello, hi, Norma Bentley, okay. So, uh, as far as uh, news go, uh, tomorrow um, is Friday, that's a day off for me, but we have the Good News Live uh, with um, Suzanne Maxey and our own Carrie Van. so... Um, that is available starting at 9, and uh, tune in. And the other thing is, is on Sunday, we have a worship. That Sunday uh, is also Scout Sunday. So uh, just a little bit of the service uh, will be uh, acknowledgement of two young men uh, who have achieved Eagle Scout. And we do that because the Boy Scout Troop 1051 is sponsored by the church. So um, they will be there. 
and uh, play a little bit of a role in the in the uh, in the liturgy, and and also have the presentation. And then the second thing um, is it's a uh, it's remember it's it's the first Sunday in the month, so it is a communion day. So come for communion, and uh, the uh, so um, and if you're at home, prepare your communion. So that is on our Sunday. Um, the other news that I, I'm so excited about is I follow the COVID numbers in the Wayne County area every day. And, um, man, they are just, uh, we are out of the severe and uh, into the moderate risk. Uh, so the numbers have been rapidly falling. And, boy, that, that's, uh, that's really good. That's good news. And then the last news is, um, well, Monday, Monday. Uh, I will not be here, um, and maybe not Tuesday. Well, we, I don't know when I'll be back, uh, hopefully quickly. But I am undergoing uh, surgery again on Monday. So that will be um, uh, 10.30, I believe, is when I'm scheduled to be in the operating room. Um, so if you want to lift up in prayers, again, it's the follow-on to my first bladder. It's, it's minimally invasive, but uh, it's still surgery my first uh, treatment for my bladder cancer. This is a follow-on, and they're going to see if there's anything else there or if there's been any regrowth. And at the very least, they're going to take some biopsies, make sure they got it all. So um, so if you pray uh, pray for me, pray for Meg, and because um, she, she'll be there. And, uh, but we're hopeful. But, but I do know that we have some very able people uh, in the form of Barry and Margot and Carrie that'll fill in on the devotions each and every day that I can't be here. But I do promise to be back as soon as I can. All right. It all depends upon how invasive the surgery goes. All right. So, um, and then on February 13th, that's a Sunday. So in addition to our regular service, we have the fundraiser for Camp Wakanda, the comedy, um, lunch uh al ernst very funny man um it's coming up uh and in the fellowship hall immediately following service pizza and salad and desserts and um and, and beverages um thirty dollars ahead for the great cause of camp wakanda and camp wakanda is in need of money we got some work to do up there so this is a fundraiser for him don't look at it and say thirty dollars for pizza no, you're going to have a great afternoon. And uh, so there, and if you can't make it, um, we have an online option. So all of that, please, we need people to sign up for that. And uh, we need this to be successful, really successful, okay? All right. So I'm so sorry to hear, uh, hi, Paul Wolf. And uh, Nancy, I'm so sorry to hear about Kimmy, that she has to go in that surgery without the pet. Um, we'll continue to pray. And, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to. Well, now I got a problem in the fact that I've got something. I don't know. Anyway, how about we just go and do our, do what we're here to do, which is to hear God's word for us today. And the good news is, well, not good news, but uh, we have a very long uh, introductory song. But I don't have a lot of commentary about the Genesis today. Not at all. So we'll catch up here. All right. So I take my, I've got my morning beverage. I hope you do too. You know, at some point we've got some more snow coming today. So um, between meetings today, got to go out there and get the snow done. You probably have to do much of the same. But I'm not worrying about that right now because I'm just here with you and with God's word. So I need to do something to set that other stuff aside just for the time that we have together. And that's my breathing exercise. If you'd like to do it with, with me, you're welcome to. Breathe in for five, hold for five, and exhale for five. Let's come under the word of the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. 
Our psalm reading today is Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I have kept my faith even when I said I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. May God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. All thanks be to God. I love this. Um, what shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. So how many of us, uh, when we participate in the Lord's Supper, do that, right? It's, we are participating in the cup of salvation. And so sometimes we make this a very internal thing for ourselves. And it is. But we also need to understand that, you know, um, and, and when I lead uh, that, you'll see that I always lift that cup uh, when I do it. I said, this is the cup of salvation. I lift it to the Lord. So, uh, and, uh, so maybe on Sunday you can do that, right? And that's, I get that right out of this psalm. Okay, we'll move on to our historical reading out of Genesis. We're still hearing about Abraham and Sarah. Fortunately, we're going to hear about Sarah dying now, right? Um, but she had a really long life. Uh, and what happens after that? So um, here we go. Genesis 23, verses 1 through 20. Sarah lived 127 years. This was the length of Sarah's life. And Sarah died at Kirath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. I'm going to pause there. That's um, traditionally considered to be just south of Jerusalem. Not too far. Maybe, well, in, is, in Israel, it's a long way. It's about 30 miles. But here in, in rural Michigan, that's how far you go to get to a supermarket. So, but anyway, about 30 miles south. That's Hebron, and it's the Hebron Valley. All right, um, that is Hebron in the land of Canaan, Canaan. And Abraham went in to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Abraham rose up beside his dead and said to the Hittites, I am a stranger and an alien residing among you. Give me property among you for a burying place so that I may bury my dead out of sight. The Hittites answered Abraham, Hear us, my lord. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our burial places. None of us will withhold from you any burial ground for burying your dead. Abraham rose and bowed to the Hittites, the people of the land. He said to them, If you are willing that I should bury my dead out of sight, hear me and entreat me for Ephron, son of Zohar, so that he may give me the cave of uh, Machpelah, which he owns. It is at the end of his field. For the full price, let, me give it, let him give it to me in your presence as a possession for a burying place. Now Ephron was sitting among the Hittites, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the hearing of the Hittites, of all who went in at the gate of his city, No, my lord, hear me, I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it, 
in the presence of my people, I give it to you. Bury your dead. And Abraham bowed down before the people of the land. He said to Ephron in the hearing of the people of the land, If you will only listen to me, I will give you the price of the land. Accept it from me, so that I may bury my dead there. Ephron answered Abraham, My lord, listen to me. A piece of land worth 400 shekels of silver, what is that between you and me? Bury your dead. Abraham agreed, and Ephron and Abraham weighed out uh, for Ephron the silver he had named in the hearing of the Hittites, 400 shekels of silver, according to the weights current among the merchants. So the field of Ephron in Machpelah, which was to the east of Mem, right, the field with the cave that was in it, and all the trees that were in the field throughout its whole area passed to Abraham as a possession in the presence of the Hittites, in the presence of all who went in at the gate of his city. After this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, facing Mamre, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan. The field and the cave that is in it passed from the Hittites into Abraham's possession as a burying place. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. Well, thanks be to God. It's an awful lot of words to talk about finding a grave, right? Um, but it's it's important um, in it's important for a couple reasons. It makes a claim for further stories uh, and further developments, and it also talks about how um, aliens, people who aren't of the land, are how they should be treated and how they should treat others. And here we see this wonderful interchange between Ephron and Abraham. He's saying, "Hey, my wife has died. I, I want, I want a one, I want a great grave for her. I want, I want this cave and this field. It belongs to Ephron, and it's it's the best. And that's what I want for my wife and for the other people in my family that died. And they honored him so much. They liked Abraham so much. They said, "Take it." He's like, no, I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to pay for it. This goes back and forth. And then Ephron says, look, what do you want? 400 shekels of silver. Right? Probably not nearly what it, what it would have gone for on the open market. So he does pay for it. But the payment is made so that, and that is felt, it's there for this reason. So that title is clear, right? Because it continually goes back. This was done in the presence, the hearing of all the Hittites. There was money exchanged. So there's no doubt. It now belongs to Abraham because this land becomes uh, an issue later on. Now, um, historically, there you could go visit this place, and um, there's no tomb there. Um, this was a cave that was at the end of a field, but the site is kept, and there was actually a, a in the Middle Ages, a, a, a very nice basilica was built, and then that was torn down in the um, uh, in the Islamic conquest. So um, it's still ruins there now, but uh, it is a place that you can go visit if you happen to go to Israel. All right, and it's holy because Abraham is the father of. Uh, Jew, Jews, Christians, and also Muslims, Islamists. So, very um, his burial place is considered to be sacred amongst all three of the major world religions. All right. All right. Hebrews chapter eleven, and all the thir verse thirty-two up into. Chapter 12, verse 2. Um, so therefore, uh, we're getting to the end of this. It's not a long. It sounds like, oh, my God, it's two, two chapters. It's not. It's just it's not that, that many. So again, uh, arguments to Jewish believers of the validity and uniqueness of Christ and the continuation of God's promises in Christ. Okay, here we go. And what more should I say? For time will fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, 
who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. I'm going to pause right there. So just uh, goes back and um, says, look, I, I've gone over a lot of this stuff, but there's even more stories, right, in what we call the Old Testament um, that, uh, that talk about faith and righteousness and salvation. And, and then he jumps into the persecutions that the Christians were seeing uh, from the Romans and also from Jewish people of faith. Um, and so that's so he kind of jumps from the ancient to the modern, right? Um, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, even chains and imprisonments. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went out about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet in all of these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight into the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. All right. We'll move on to John, see what the Gospel of John has to say to us. And we're in the sixth chapter, it's verses 60 through 71. Um, so this is a continuation of uh, the teaching which began is that he is the bread of life. And then we went into uh, how manna, holy bread, was... Um, given to the people while they were in um, uh, in the exodus and then jesus talks about how he is the bread of life that provides that so and then he says eat my flesh drink my blood and um and uh now his disciples have heard this and they're kind of i can just imagine they're they're kind of looking at each other and saying this is this is different this is a different teaching that we haven't heard before so here we go. John chapter 6, verses 60 through 71. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He is speaking of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, for he, though one of the twelve, was going to betray him. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. We get a deep insight into the early ministry of Jesus after the, the naming of the twelve, right? <clears throat> that it wasn't all well and good. That they had, in addition to the twelve, there was others that were coming together. And, you know, 
who knows how many, you know, was it in the hundreds? But at this point, he starts to really give some hard teachings. And it says that some of them, some people said, nah, I'm done. I'm out. It's a hard thing, right? And he's just saying, even among the 12, even among the 12, there's one. Now, he picked those. He knew that. So that means that, to me, right, uh, Judas was there for a reason. Judas, Ju Judas was there for a reason. For, for our teaching, our learning, right, for the completion of God's plan for Christ, all of those things together, right? God working above us and below us and within us. And um, so just, just think about that. When everybody, everybody gives Judas a hard time. And, and um, I have to say, when I read this, I'm going to say, wait a second, he, he was there for a purpose, a God, a God chosen purpose. Okay. Hi, Tracy Crutz. Thank you, Judy, Larry and Carolyn Thomas, and Meg, too. Thank you. Hi, Helen England. Thank you. Thank you, Judy Hatch. Prayers for Kimmy and Pastor Tim from Barry and Margo. Thank you, Kip, all of you. Thank you. Hi, Robin Allen. Judy Sutherland is with us. You're welcome, Amy. We're going to keep mentioning it until we pack the house. Pack the house, right? Thank you, Barbara Shute. Thank you, Norma. All right. And Barry and Margo, thank you for doing that. No, it's not. It's not our friend at all. I saw that. Uh, let's see. Oh, the other news. And, uh, and, uh, I would imagine Nancy Horvath is dancing. Is uh, Jim Harbaugh staying? Michigan through all this thing I don't know if you, I, I do I do admire the University of Michigan I love college football and I admire the University of Michigan and uh, so I have been following this thing and I have to admit to being pretty exasperated saying hey you know they had a great season reward them for that give them a contract sign on and then he, you know, I don't want to say playing games but seeing what his other options are so it all supposedly came to an end yesterday where he said I'm back at Michigan for for good until he changes his mind <laughs> or next year you know <laughs> so anyway but that's nothing that's you know that's just things we do to take up our time it doesn't really matter right? who's the coach at the University of Michigan doesn't really matter uh, in life or at any college or who wins a college football game Right, it's all about it's all about uh, experiencing God's fullness in community together, and that's what we try to do. All right, so we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray today, and thank you so much for your prayers. I know I feel them, and uh, Meg feels them, so I appreciate that. And uh, we'll make sure that we keep everybody informed about how everything is going. All right, so let's pray. Lord, we all need are in need of prayer. We all are in need of uh, your mercy your presence in our lives. Certainly, uh, we, we do ask for all of that. We thank you for this day that you've given us, this opportunity to be together. We lift up all who are in need of uh, healing. We want to lift up Kimmy. Uh, and Lord, I'll, I'll lift up myself as part of that uh, today. Just uh, we pray for your guidance to, for our healthcare professionals. We pray that uh, we'll have mercy and grace and be taken care of well uh, by all. And Lord, we, we do this because we want to be delivered to full healing. And so we ask all of this. And uh, Lord, uh, as we go about uh, our lives today, we just ask that you continue to be with us. And um, Lord, uh, we want, uh, we want uh, everyone to experience the fullness of life that's available through your Holy Spirit. And all we have to do is believe your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for this. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, all. God bless you. I love you all. I hope uh, I hope that um, uh, everything is well with you. And as you go about your day, live it in the Lord, okay? 
I love you. God loves you. So does everybody here at uh, Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how. God bless you all. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.